And welcome to Frightmare HQ. Today it's Saturday, May 9th. My name is Lloyd Cryer, and I'm here with my guest, Charles Doe's. Charles? Your guest. I'm your guest. guest now? Well, you're my you've been promoted to guest. No, this is my co-host, Charles. No. Doe's. I am the guest. You guys, Lloyd is here today to interview me about my life and times. So, Charles, I have a few What's questions up? for you today. Thank you for joining um, me today. Yeah, I mean, I was born on a cold and rainy Chicago night in the ghetto. In the ghetto. In the ghetto. Are you <laughs> singing that? Mama do you have Elvis in your head when you sing that? I do. I do all the time. All right, guys. So uh, we have the amazing Patricia Tallman coming on today. She'll be here in a couple minutes. She We're will talk to her about a bunch of stuff. Stuff and, and things. Uh, things and stuff. Things and stuff. We've already got quite a few people joining us. Welcome thanks to the show, everybody. everybody. Yeah, thanks for coming and hanging out with us um, for today's show. I'm really excited. We got a lot going on today, but besides uh, our interview with Patricia Tallman, we also have our uh, Twitch watch party tonight of uh, Friday the 13th. So don't forget to join us tonight. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, listening to a live commentary with me and Lloyd, we probably had a few drinks. Well, it's going to be fantastic. Are we going to drink tonight? I mean, I've already started. I didn't know we were supposed to. <laughs> I thought we were starting early. Crap. Let's, I haven't let's, started. Uh, let's put this what you, away. What, really? What are you drinking already? Are you drinking Actually, this is water. <laughs> it's just <laughs> water. That's all I have to eat. It's the hard stuff, you know, that, that pure out of the faucet, wonderful goodness, you know? Yeah. <sighs> so I'm going to answer a question. Uh, there, what you well, got? We got Jess. Hey, good morning, Jess. Jess, it's uh, early in Australia, but thank you for joining us. 4.30 a.m. Sunday. Uh, got someone here. Can we get Texas Frightmare tees and hats anywhere? Yes, you can. Um, we sell those on our website. And everything that's there is for um, pickup at the event. Um, but I, we do have a surprise coming very soon. I can't talk about it yet, but we have some stuff coming up that uh, we're going to put out there if anybody is interested. Also, um, if you're interested, I think soon we may have some Frightmare HQ t-shirts soon. If you'd like one of those. And of course, those won't be pickup at the show. We'll just send those out to you. Yeah. We'll just, we'll, we'll just, throw, them, we'll just throw them at your house because... If you're in Dallas, me Lloyd will drive by and just throw it at your house. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, let's so, see here. What else do we Patricia have while we good. wait for Patricia? I don't know. You know, I'm just I'm just doing my thing, man. Doing my thing. Just um, still riding it out. Even though they're opening up everything, I'm still I'm still quarantining. I don't want to go out. No, no, I don't want to quarantine either. But whatever. I'm used to it. Mm. Yeah. Bradley oh. Hoffman asks, howdy, guys. What are we drinking today? Well, later we'll be drinking. Thanks for joining us, but right now we're drinking I got water. water. Beautiful, delightful water. Mm. From the upper slopes of Mount Nicaragua, no artificial sweeteners. <laughs> exactly. Mm. All right, guys. It uh, looks like we have Patricia just joined us. Let's, bring, let's go ahead and bring her in. What do you say? Let's bring her in. Oh. Hi, Patricia. Hi, guys. Hi. How are you doing? How are you? Uh, I'm great. I'm really glad to be here with you today. I'm I'm sorry we haven't been able to get together in person yet, but we will in a few months, hopefully. We will. We're. It's going to yeah. happen. Um, happen. It is going to happen. You look <laughs> wonderful. Oh, thank you. I dressed up for you. It's a clean t-shirt. <laughs> we, we we dressed up for you too. We took a shower and we got all ready to meet you. So oh, we're so very sad. excited. I, I did you shave? It doesn't look like you shaved. No, I can't. <laughs> Charles Charles is speaking for himself. I didn't shower, so <gasps> oh. all right. Well, at least there's we don't have odorama here, so we're exactly we're all good. okay. Good. So one of the last times we spoke, you were stuck in Scotland. Are you? You're you're home, right? You're not still stuck no. in Scotland, are you? <laughs> yeah, no, we 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 got back. We we ended up staying about three weeks longer than we meant to. Oh wow! Of the shutdown and our flights were canceled, which is, um, you know, a good problem to have in a in a kind of way. It really worked out to be rather magical. So, I, I 
I had an amazing time in Scotland. The, the point was for me to go to create my next adventure, because that's what I'm doing now, is creating these travel adventures for fellow nerds like me. And uh, so we really got to explore more <laughs> while we, since we were stuck there. There's worse I've places to be stuck in. No kidding. It was, the nature is incredible. We were outside every day, no matter what the weather. Mostly the weather was actually pretty good. It was kind of crazy. And everything was shut. There's no restaurants, no pubs, no none of the tourist attractions, you know, we, that I wanted to explore to see if it's something we wanted to do. But we did so much more hiking into nature and uh, finding our own kind of the cool archaeological spots that are nice. normally kind of overlooked because everyone's going to the popular ones, the big castles and, the, and Loch Ness and, you know, things like that. So since all of this is just available for us to walk up to, for instance, we ended up in this huge ruin that was what was the basis for the story of Camelot. It was called Camelot. Oh, wow. And it's nice. it, and we're walking around like we're going, oh my God, we're Camelot. This is Camelot. It's this gigantic base of a castle that's now all overgrown. It was just insane. That sounds gorgeous. Yeah. That does sound gorgeous. And mm -hmm. I believe that's called uh, Quest Retreats, right? Which you oh, have built you. as a, a Ventures for Nerds. That's right. <laughs> I, think we, I think we would like that. I'm well, a huge nerd. About that so that's, before we go on with everything. I'd yeah, tell us a little bit. Oh, sure. Well, about... Um, I. I'll go a little, I'll, I'll give you kind of the ramp up because I had to, okay. I, I, I needed to reinvent myself when it really is true in Hollywood that when you hit a certain age, you are invisible, you know, and in not castable. And um, I decided that I really needed to, to do something that fulfilled my soul, that made me feel like I used to feel when I was acting all the time or I was doing stunts all the time. You know what? I'm 62 now. So what can I do that is going to make my life just rock again? And so I can feel good about things. So about um, seven years ago, uh, I really had kind of a whole breakdown, which now I can look back on and say that was a breakthrough. I broke through and had to let go of my old life and start to figure out what the next phase was going to be. And here I am in, at that time in my 50s. You know, This is not a usual time when most people are switching careers. But I put together with, I took a bunch of courses and I put together the things that I really love. And I love personal growth. I love that, I love that whole um, looking at your mindset and trying to make your life better. I love that, I love traveling, I love adventure. Um, I, and I'm a huge nerd. So by that meaning anything that has to do with the stories and books that I love and that a lot of us share, whether it's science fiction or horror or it's, um, uh, you know, fantasy like like Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings, you know, all that stuff is just my wheelhouse, what I love. So I thought what would be amazing is to help people feel magic in their life again, because that's what I was looking for. What is what is going to be that spark, you know, that that gives me the energy to keep going and, and feel like I'm being of service and doing something that's meaningful and yet magical, meaningful and magical, you know, finding that Venn diagram of, of what are my skills and then what are my desires, right? So I, I came up with these travel adventures, long story, very short. Um, mm -hmm. And it's been incredible. And right now we're obviously, we're in a place where travel's not happening. And honestly, it could be two years before I could get another trip going because it takes almost a year of promotion to get another trip going. And so if we're not gonna open up for a year and then I get the dates and then I set it up with the vendors and then we can go, you know what I mean? It's gonna take some sure. time. So what do I do now? <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. And I, I've come up with something else. So I'm, I'm doing, um, I'm having very personal events that uh, oh, be virtual events. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, so you can sign okay. up at, at, at questretreats.com. I've got a mailing list going in, and um, Perfect. if you'd like to know about it, just let me know and I'll, I'll be sharing that with you. Okay, we'll definitely yeah. go and check mm -hmm. that out. And I know Thank all of you. our readers will too. You're getting so many comments about you look amazing. Oh, oh. 
You do. Okay, you haven't changed a bit. At 62, you don't look 62 uh, at all. Mm. I think I, I do. Older it. than she does. <laughs> I think I do in person. Maybe this is, wait, I'm, now I'm not centered. Oh, yeah, I'm having the same over. problem here. <laughs> We're going to be um, like. <laughs> oh, guys, look, you guys are all. Okay, now I see. I can see live comments. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. All right. Tom is here, too. Tom Savini is here. What? Commenting yeah, on it. Yeah. He's in to check it out. You should have just had him call in too. We could have had a conversation. Why, you could send him a link. Send him a link. <laughs> oh, yeah. We we could. I'll, I'll send Tom a link. Let's do that. So, yeah, yeah. I definitely love hearing your, your travel stories because I'm also a fellow travel nerd. I travel for the sole purpose of doing film locations. So, I love oh. hearing your little adventures. So, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. Sure. I mean, anytime. I, I, you know, I could talk about this stuff forever. It just. I love it. And I, I really, I'm, I'm going to places that get me excited. So you may say, mm -hmm. you know, you might want to go to, to Iceland or something like that. And I really don't have the Jones to go to Iceland, <laughs> but I'm going to Africa. So, you know, I'm going to set that up and I'm trying to find what, if, if I'm really excited about it, then I can't <clears throat> help but transmit that to my group and I keep it small. So the group is 10 to 15 people small so that, that I can really hang out with everybody. And I'm there with you every day, everything we do. And then I get like a local guide who really knows the area and I've already scouted it out. So then I put on my, my magical touch to it so that it really isn't just, it's not a trip. It's a transformation. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something that can help us change our lives. Yeah. That's so amazing. That's what I want to do. <laughs> well, so, sorry, go ahead, let's start. Yeah, well, let's just start. I mean, we've got Savini. Um, he Tommy. was talking about that. Uh, so, well, he popped in. So, we were talking about Tom. So, might as well start from the beginning with uh, where you started your very first feature film role, Knight Riders. Oh, yeah. 1981 oh, wow. with George Romero. Yep. Uh, I, I was so blessed. I was so blessed that not only did, were there a lot of people on that shoot that I knew either from like, like Tom from school and, or they were people that became instant friends because we all were just, you know, George seems to have a way of bringing together people of a like mind and they're a great energy. And um, everybody was amazing, you know, from the cast to the crew. Um, some of my professors at Carnegie Mellon were designers and costumers, and they were on the, the set as well. So they were there. It, it was just remarkable. And then to have George be the director, that was the first time I was ever in front of a camera, not just my first feature film, but in front of a camera, period. I don't think that's right? stage work. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> so it was that was amazing. I used but to go I, to this set just to watch Ed Harris work. Oh like, yeah, oh my yeah. God. And that yeah. started well, sort of a with Ed Harris. And uh, did you did you get to meet Stephen King when he was on? Set? Yes, that's yeah. awesome. He's he was uh, he was so not. I I don't know what I expected, but he was so not what I expected. He was just so lovely and warm. And not at all scary, <laughs> you know. And neither is George. <laughs> George is like this lovely, warm, charming person. You know, uh, you just can't believe that horror is their thing. You know. <laughs> we had George at the show a few times, and he was always so sweet, such yeah. a nice man. Yeah. You yeah, always got that grandfather feeling, or at least I did yeah. when I was around George. Sure. You know. And, yeah, and he, he 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 would hug me every time I would see him, you know, and he'd wrap uh -huh. those giant arms around. I know he's such you know? a big guy. You don't expect that, do you? When you meet him, you go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but there's yeah. so many Night Riders fans out there now. I mean, it's just become wow. uh, a cult classic in every sense of the word. And it's an amazing movie. So it is. It's, it's talk about bringing magic back in, right? I mean, with the blood, brother blues character Merlin. That that and his relationship with King Billy, you know uh, Ed Harris. So th there, the the belief that there's like a power greater than yourself. There's something out there that's taking care of you, and and that Brother Blue could could bring that in and bring that to life for <laughs> Billy. You know, it's just, I love that. I thought that was amazing. And I, we've always got George hanging out on set here. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let me see. <laughs> George has to be us. Little George has to be with us. He's our yeah. good luck charm. 
Yeah. Yes, I have. I have. Where's my Dalek? This is what I have. Oh, uh, there you go. So you're a, a Who fan. I'm a Whovian. You're, you're a Whovian. <clears throat> Did you ever work on any any Who stuff at all? No. Do I wish I? Oh, God. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That I would wish. have been a dream come th true, right? Yes. Yes, in a massive way. But uh, yeah. Whatever. So <laughs> Night Riders really kicked off the. The that time period you worked a lot with Savini and Romero during there. I know you did um Tales from the Dark Side episode with Savini, Monkey Shines. So how was it working with them? Is it just that same wonderful feeling every single time? Yeah, yeah. I I think that's part of the the down to earthness. You know the the being real. So working with Tom is, and I'm not just saying you can look me up. I I always say this, not just because he might be listening right now, but he <laughs> he is. He's a remarkable director. He is amazing for actors to work with because he has that actor's soul in himself. But um, what I found remarkable with it was um, he had such insight into the character and then into the actor and could see the connections being made and he has such respect. So he would just sort of say, here it is, okay, go and, and, and trust us with it. And uh, I, when when it you when you feel trust when an artist feels trusted, magic happens again with the magic. But it it's true. It kind of ignites your it ignites your creativity because you feel safe, and right. it, uh, it's it's a beautiful thing. And I think that just happened all over the place on that set because of of Tom's guidance. Yeah. Well, and that's what you know. As being an artist, that's what your thing is. You know, you, is. you have ideas and you have this creativity flowing. So when right. a when a director lets she, lets that happen, it's got to be magic. It is. It is magic. When I um, when I was working on Night Riders, and here I am working with George Romero, and I I mean I don't I just I was so naive. I was I was twenty one, I think, on that, and I and I would make suggestions to him for my character. I never stepped over the, I, I knew I knew enough not to, I, and I ha had no uh, suggestions for anybody else, but you know, you can, you can suggest for yourself, but you're never supposed to give anybody else tips or ideas and uh, direction. That's the director's job. But I would talk to him about things and, and make suggestions and he would listen again with the respect. And then he'd say, that's a really good idea. Let's do that. And I'm like, wow. Uh, I had no idea how lucky I was. That may have been the last time I heard that until Tom Savini. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, he was just always so very generous and so very interested. Awesome. Uh, I've got a question from Matt Orsman. How do question. you get that? That's, I love those little pop-ups. How do you well, do they're, that? Well, they're comments here. And when everybody leaves a comment, I can just pull it up on my side and display it on the screen. Oh, okay. But the question is, did your work on Knight Riders inform your work in stunts? The, the direct correlation is that while I was on Knight Riders, I met stunt people. There was a lot of stunt people riding those motorcycles and the guys would come in and then their wives or girlfriends would join them because it was a long shoot. We shot for three months, which is, was pretty long. And um, so these stunt people who were a lot of fun would show up and usually a lot of us would go down to watch when they were just shooting the stunts because it was fun. Um, so I would, I did, I started to have conversations with stunt guys and that was the first time I really realized that it was a career choice. I was again, very naive coming from the theater. And I thought that's such a, that's such an interesting thing to do, to, to do stunts. And they were doing motorcycles, which I, I, I have no interest in and never did, but um, it, it put, it, it planted a seed planted a seed. And so when I, when that started to come up for me while I was working in New York City, um, I, I did keep those connections. And when I finally moved to Los Angeles, I looked up some of those folks and they were very gracious and brought me, brought me along. So yeah. Right. Thanks, Matt. Good question. <laughs> so speaking of the stunts, um, tell us a little bit about how you got involved with Jurassic Park. That must've been a very intimidating stunt performance to have to do. You know, um, we didn't know we were making Jurassic Park. Really? We didn't, we didn't know it was Jurassic Park. You know, it was, just, <laughs> it was a movie with dinosaurs and the dinosaurs we saw were like little, you know, so Gary Himes, who's our stunt coordinator, um, 
he had a he had a cloth bag and in the bag he had matchbox cars and little like dinosaur toys and he would say okay pat you're in the jeep here and here comes the dinosaur <laughs> here's the act boom it's going to hit the jeep with the, and then you do this thing and so we go okay cool and then, and then we, go and shoot them. we didn't know it was like charades, <laughs> but you didn't know you were working for Steven Spielberg. Steven Spielberg, yeah. That to me, that was uh, I was okay. flipping out because he <laughs> he was in the he was in the camera truck, and I'm in the the hero vehicle, which means the vehicle being shot, right? That's the one that's on camera, the hero vehicle. So I'm in that the jeep with the stunt guys driving it, the stunt guy who was playing injured, um, um, in um, oh fuck, what's his name? Oh my god, I love him, Jeff Goldblum. He's being uh. either Jeff Goldblum. And the other guy's driving, and I'm doubling Laura. And um, Stephen goes, "Okay, Pat." Or he's on the mic, you know, going, "All right, then what we do is here's here's number one." So they had that the T Rex was a, a stick about I don't know, 15, 18 feet long. It was metered off black, white, black, white. At the very top was a big disc, a cardboard white disc with a happy face and teeth drawn on it. <laughs> and that was the T-Rex. And so he said it, when I say one, you're you're looking up here and they put the stick and then they said when you're when I say two and then they lowered the stick and said, "Okay, that's your number 2 mark with it. That's the head of the T-Rex." And when he's when on um, 3, the explosion is going to hit the the door of the Jeep and you're going to just react to that, you know as that was no big deal because obviously you're going to react to an explosion at your leg. You know? sure, so yeah. I'll look at the right place at that point. So that's what it was. I mean, we take off and he's shouting, okay, Patty, one, two, you know, <laughs> at that. And so when we went to the movies and we went to the theater to see it, there was no screening. We just went to the movies, and I remember when they just the the beginnings playing out, and then they finally get to Jurassic Park, and they finally drive out, and they find the big pile of poo, and they're going, "Wow, that's going to be a big animal to make that much poo or something." And then all of a sudden, we see this field of brontosauruses and and little ostrich-sized ones, and every and all I was sitting with a whole bunch of people in the crew, and we all went, <laughs> I mean, just like everybody in the audience. Just, Holy shit, wow, had we known, but we didn't, we had no idea. When I was in the rotunda at the end, at the end of the big culminating scene and the T-Rex comes in and he's gonna chomp on all the good guys and then the raptors come down and there's the scaffolding stuff happening. That was a very gnarly day. But the, when, when we were there rehearsing, there were some guys in the raptor suits. So they had, you know, they had the team with the um, uh, animatronics on some of the raptor heads. And these poor dudes were inside those suits, which are practically seamless. And they had they had some way they could breathe and they had an earpiece in and they would take direction, but they were completely blind and their arms are pinned to their sides. And the head of the actual uh, raptor is, you know, three feet above them and the, uh, the uh, uh, the, there were guys, uh, there's wires coming out of the bottom of the costume and there's guys with the little remote control, just like you do with games. You know, they're, they're controlling the eyelids and the little movements. And then the um, guy in the suit would listen to his cues and be cued to take a step forward, bend down. And then the animatronics would bring the head up under the plastic and then start to look around, you know, so the head's doing all this. It was fascinating, but it was, it, it was really interesting because the, the guys in the suits are just wearing Nikes. They're not wearing, they're not wearing dinosaur feet. They're just wearing <laughs> ni Nikes. <you> know? <laughs> and so all those shots where you see the raptor and you're really looking at the raptor's head. A lot of that is, are the animatronic puppetry, especially in the first Jurassic Park, it's gone on and changed since the, what are, the, what are we on now, five? The, but the, um, any of the feet shots, those are obviously, those are uh, CGI. <laughs> yeah. 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 Somebody asked, uh, have you ever had any serious injuries from performing stunts? Um, yes, but I'd say the worst of it is the cumulative effect. Like I've had. Okay. You have several. Um, 
concussions, for instance, and you get concussions different ways. A concussion is a shock to your spinal column or, or a brain injury, but it can also be from landing too hard on my tailbone. And uh, I've had so many of those that that's a really bad thing. And uh, I have broken my back, but strangely, I didn't know I'd done it because I also had a concussion and I broke, um, I broke my finger pretty badly. My finger was the thing that hurt the worst. Um, but yeah, I found out the next day I'd broken my back. I couldn't get out of bed. Yikes. Yeah, I mean, wow. yeah, you break, I've broken my tailbone a bunch of times, the lower part of my back. Uh, what else? I don't even, I don't know. Too many concussions. <laughs> too, too, too many Too many to count. <laughs> so the answer is yes. I have a lot yes. of aches and pains, and I've got some hip issues. I mean, I, as old stuff, people are like old athletes or they're like old um, football players. You know, you, 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 you've damaged your body. You've done some shit yourself yeah you've got, <laughs> you've got some bumps and bruises yeah right? Advil is my best friend oh i bet <laughs> <laughs> so um more more of some stunt stuff i heard you were in the universal studios live show for conan is that true yeah i was okay. it was uh, i thought like, so red sonia yeah, okay <laughs> yeah. it's one of my first jobs coming to los angeles it was like my was first it? job yeah it was great because i met so many other actors and stunt people working their way up like me and uh, uh, it, it was quite the thing. It was, it was awesome. It was an awesome job. How long did you do that for? Maybe a year and a half. I, I quit to do, <laughs> um, to do Night of the Living Dead. So oh, when well. Tommy let me know I was cast, I was out of there. <laughs> you, were, you were gone. <laughs> I was done. Yes. <laughs> a year so, and a half was enough. <laughs> Being a guest of Night of the Living Dead, you know, I guess one of the biggest things people always love about that is how they turn Barbara into like this heroine. So yeah. when when reading the script and auditioning, were you excited at the possibility of turning this character into something a lot different than the original film? Sure. Uh, yeah. Because uh, first of all, my first reaction was because I didn't I didn't know about the copyright issue when they were why, why George was redoing it. It's like, why are they redoing it? The first one was so fucking scary. I mean, yeah. oh my God. Um, and and uh, um, Judith is amazing. I mean, the, that, was the, that was the trope for those days, right? That was the kind of thing that, that you saw women do. They always panic and then die or have sex and then die or something. So, <laughs> the, right? I mean, seriously, in those days. Yeah. So uh, when Tom, Tom told me about it and he said, yeah, yeah, no, no. I, it, trust me, just read it, just read it, just read it. And when I read it, I was like, oh, okay, now I get it. And yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to be kind of a female action hero kind of thing, you know? I, I just, I didn't, I didn't articulate it very well, but that's what I wanted to do. I like be the every man and, and the av average person and then have unusual circumstances come on top of that and you have to rise to the occasion and you find all these qualities about yourself you, and, and stamina and that's, that to me, is hopeful for everybody. So I love that Barbara in the beginning is like this normal kind of school teacher lady and you know, nothing special about her. And then this shit hits and she goes kind of catatonic, a little bit weird. You know, she gets a little bit weird and Tony Todd takes her by the shoulders and goes, look, I need you to show up. I need you to get control of yourself here right. it's before everybody else showed up. And I love those that moment. And Tommy, I remember Tommy saying, you know, this is that moment and you're gonna overcome it because that's that was Judith O'Day went into that state and never came out. I, I start to go into that state and I come right out. And that's right. the difference, right? Which yeah. was way ahead of its time for yeah. that, even for that time period was yeah. Yeah. Ahead of its time. I mean, Sigourney Weaver had done Aliens and we'd never seen anything like that, right? We saw, mm -hmm. uh, I remember when watching Aliens and I think Tom, did, did, we, did you and Tasso and I go to see that? I think we all went together. Uh, um, the, the, when when Tom Skerritt dies and he's like the fucking captain, you're like, wait, what happened? We're only 20 minutes in and, and the captain died. What's and then she she starts to come forward as this character and taking charge. I'm like, Whoa. I love that. That was amazing. Well, one thing about Night of the Living Dead is looking back, there's there's been a lot of remakes of horror movies, and there's only a handful that you can say. Wow, what a great remake. It added something. Uh, it brought something to uh, the original. Yes. Sure. And I think Night of the Living Dead is one. Um, John Carpenter's The Thing. 
uh, yes. one, and you know, there's a handful of others, but most there of you don't, don't rise to the occasion and bring something new. Not of the living dead did that. Oh, that's thanks to Tom. You really got to, I think you got to give him credit for that because he did look I, I, and Tom, I've heard Tom speak of it. He's very modest. I mean, George did write that, but he and Tom talked a lot and Tom really uh, was pushing the advancement of the story and the advancement of the effects um, as well as, as he really saw Barbara very clearly before I was cast, he knew what he wanted to do with Barbara. Um, and that was to make her the hero of the story kind of unusual, you know? Yeah. Amazing. One thing I'd um, love to talk about before we, we hit our time is I know you do a lot of charity work, um, especially around abused children. Can you tell us a little bit about some of these um, organizations you're involved with and maybe how people could get involved a little bit? Well, that's so sweet of you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I've been working with a, a, um, a children's group home organization called Penny Lane here in California. They serve three states. Um, and they've grown so much. Let's, I've been involved for like 28 years now, I guess, no. since I got here. Holy smokes. And um, I run a holiday program for the kids. I'm always supporting Penny Lane, but that's kind of my program, my way of stepping up, trying to make the holidays special for kids where that's such an awful time of year for foster kids and kids in group homes, right? It's a terrible time. So trying to just, just give them some hope and make them feel like there's people out there who are not such assholes. You know, there's people out there who care and there's people out there who are like you, who, who made it, made it through and have good lives. So um, Penny Lane's kind of the last stop before the kid ends up in juvie. The kids that I work with are, are teenagers. So I get them from, well, sometimes 12 and a half, but usually 13 to 18. And that's a tough demographic. I mean, they're all, they can all be really tough. Um, they've been through shit you don't even want to know about. You don't want to know that other human beings can do that to children. Yeah. So um, it just felt like a place I could, I could maybe make a difference. And I've, I've been really happy helping them. I just see them as an incredible organization. They have, they are, they've been cutting edge creating programs that keep these kids off the streets. Now, it's really hard to, to stay on the, on the straight and narrow when you have friends who are drug dealers and driving Lexuses and having Rolexes, right? And having all the, yep. the great tech because they're drug dealers. So how do you keep a kid from who's on the streets who doesn't see a way forward from going there? And I, you can't save them all, but you can help those who are maybe a little more open to being helped. And that's what Penny is all about. So I really love that. And I also wrote a book. I wanted, to, I wanted to say that before I, before I ended up. Thanks. Well, tell us about yeah. it. Tell um, us about the book. So this book is, is about my, my five years on Babylon 5, which I know is science fiction, but I also did Night of the Living Dead. And I, I talk about that. And I talk about my years. Uh, Jurassic Park is in there. The, the five years I was on that show and everything I was doing in between, because as an actor, stunt person, you don't turn down any job until you hit a certain level. And then you, you sure. can afford to. But... Um, I never really hit a level where I could afford to, to, to stop working or turn down jobs. I turned down things that maybe asked something of me I didn't believe in. Uh, but mostly, you know, I just did, I worked day and night. I'd work days as, a, as an actor. I'd work nights as a stunt person. I did commercials. I didn't, I didn't stop because it was just the, the norm for folks like us. But when I got a chance to write this book, it made me go back and look at everything and I, I have to say I'm really, really grateful for the publishers um, who asked me to do this because it, it's like I got so, I got to enjoy those five years instead of just being blindly working and, and being a single mom, you know, all at the same time, I actually got to appreciate it. Oh, I was really lucky. I, I earned it, but I was lucky. So I wrote the book in 2011, but I've done a new version for 2020. It's been out of print for about five years. So oh, you can go to the same place, that questretreats.com. There's a link for pleasure thresholds. That's, that's the name of the book, if you're interested. And right now, because I'm in lockdown, I'm home signing books. So you, oh, can, get, nice. you can get them autographed, but that, that will end as soon as, um, as soon as I have to start traveling again. I won't be able to do that. Perfect. It'll just go to, yeah, it'll just, you could just buy it wherever. 
but and right that's now on your website, right? Yeah, that's on the website. Be a be a org. Is that where people could also visit? That you can go there to see about Penny Lane and to see about the Perfect. be a Santa. And I do. We start doing a lot of promotion. Me and my a couple of volunteers, <clears throat> friends of mine. We start in October, like around Halloween, and we start promoting to raise money for the kids for the program. So your book. Uh, I guess this is the first edition. Maybe I see it on Amazon for two hundred and fifty bucks. Oh, that's just because. Okay, so the one so it's the, out of print, maybe or it's out of print. But that's that is um, uh, it's being printed through Amazon printing. But I'm fulfilling <laughs> it myself. Oh, and, great! Which means that I order the books and then I I ship them out from my own house, where as opposed to you buying it on Amazon and it. Um, that's an easy way to do, but you can't autograph anything that way, obviously. So um, right. right now, I'm I'm doing it myself, and so I put 200. It has to be live in order for me to print them. So I put the highest price I could on them, 250 dollars, so that you would buy it for me from for 35 dollars rather than. <laughs> there you go. Let's go to the website. And buy it. That's it the way live. to do it. But and so I had to, I have to have that live. That's Amazon has some quirks, um, and and that the the format of the book when we formatted it back in 2011 when we first made the book it was a very common format and now it's discontinued everywhere. So I can't even go to like Lulu and print it. I have to print it at Amazon. So I'm a little <laughs> stuck. At, my next book won't be like that. My next book I'm going to have a more different size. Well, I was well, looking, uh, you worked with Lloyd Kaufman as well, going back to 1982, uh -huh. st stuck on you. Um, <laughs> that is kind of a classic though. It's one of is those it? classics from that, from that, uh, sub -genre, you know, and it's very yeah. highly rated. Oh, good. Well, good. Yeah, it is. Uh, I, so that was, was, um, sorry, go ahead. No, no, it was just, that was a, a, a culture shock because I had just, you know, I'd worked with George and I had Tom and I had this great experience. And then I go to, I go to work with them. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just call them them. Them. <laughs> and it was, it was like the exact opposite. <laughs> yeah. But it was, it was good because it, it gave me a taste of, of all of it, you know, and made me really appreciate everything else. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got Mindy Karangola. Uh, Hi, Mindy. Says, yeah, she says uh, it's a great book. Oh, thanks, Art. Yeah, yeah, thank everybody. you. I think it's everybody kind of check a, the book out. I try to give a taste of what it's like to be a working actor. I print my contracts in there so you can see how much I was making on Babylon Five. I I really try to share the nitty gritty of what it's what it's really like. You know, it is so. It's such a. It's one of those weird career choices being an actor that people have a perception of it and it and the, the truth is something so greatly different and so yeah i think it's it's helpful for uh my my friend if you if you guys are act anyone an actor out there look up david dean botrell b-o-t-t-r-e-l-l -L. he wrote a book on working actor and it's it's a must if you want to be an actor and you want to work in this business he's you get that one. My book is is more generalized, but it is again, you know, kind of what it's really like. And um, you gotta love, you gotta love being an actor. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard work. It it's really hard work. Is. Yeah, I, I think we see in, in reality TV is you know this incredible amount of bullshit. That reality TV has got nothing to do with anything real that has nothing to do with our business you know it has nothing to do with being an actor it has nothing to do with being a good person so if you want to be an actor i always say get an education do uh, actors are smart people honestly i mean the best actors are smart they may not come across that way but they are literate they know what's going on in the world and they know the classics and hopefully you train a little bit in that and that gives you so much to work with then because you get thrown onto these sets like stuck on you and yeah. you got to figure out <laughs> <laughs> How to keep yourself from dying a death of a thousand screams right now? So what am I gonna do? You know, you gotta have, you gotta have resources. Well, I feel bad for bringing that movie up. Oh no, it's kind <laughs> of so fun. Sorry. It's kind of fun, and now everyone's gonna watch it, and I'm gonna be horrified. Yeah, I, I don't even know how much my character's in. There. I never watched yeah. it. I couldn't take it. It says you played Queen Guinevere. Queen Guinevere. It's it's. 
I'm glad that it turned out. I hope that it's a positive movie. That's all <laughs> I can say. I hope it's positive. Well, moving on, Travis Brown says, what was it like to work with you. Bruce Boxleitner? Uh, Bruce is my hero. He really was the oh, captain wow. of our ship. He it was the most he's the most lovely, sweet person, very down to earth. I'll tell you a quick Bruce story. I had a I was having one of those days on the set. It only happened to me once on Babylon 5. I could not get my words out right. And I was causing a delay. We were getting ready to go to lunch. And I swear I was putting us over by 20 minutes, which is a lot, a lot of time when you are shooting so close to the to the deadline as we were. And I just couldn't get my fucking words out. So finally, finally we got the scene. Um, one of the producers was a real dickhead to me. I'm walking down the corridor. We have these vast hallways in between sound stages. And I'm walking down the corridor. Bruce is coming towards me. And he just goes, what's going on, Pat? And I just said, oh, I just, you know, I couldn't get my words out. What a nightmare. And he said, yeah, I know those days. He goes, Doug's not in his office. Third door, on, third door down on the left. It's a bottle of bourbon. <laughs> and get on in there. He said, I'm done. There. I've gone in there, taking a shot, you know, get my shit back together and get back up. <laughs> I mean, Bruce, so when, when guest stars, we have guest stars, right? You have guest actors that come on just for that episode. And some of them are a big deal, like, you know, um, Michael York, you know, Brad Dourif. We had some amazing yeah. guest stars. So they come on the set. And it didn't matter if they were a big famous person or if they were just a good alien type, Bruce was so gracious and, and welcoming. And, oh, I haven't met you yet. What's your name? Oh, great good, thank, great to have you on the set kind of thing. And it sets the tone for the crew, for the rest of the actors, you know, to have a great attitude and a welcoming attitude. Um, there was a time when Jerry Doyle was giving me some shit. I had a costume on. I had a, a, a it crossed. It was a top that kind of crisscrossed. And... Um, I have breasts and upon occasion, cause we're moving around the, uh, crisscrossing would kind of start to loosen up. And I was always adjusting my wardrobe, which is, I didn't want to malfunction, but Jerry was <laughs> making some really obnoxious comments and I, you know, it's Jerry. So I wasn't really paying attention, but Bruce just went, knock it off. Leave oh. her home. And I, I was like, thank you. Wow. I never expected anyone to come to my, you know. That was yeah. nice. You know? That is nice. <laughs> yeah. And he and Jerry are like best friends. So it wasn't, it wasn't like there was any, uh, that, that Bruce needed to prove anything. He was just like, cut it out. That's just rude. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love Bruce and I still well, love Bruce. Good. Yeah. It's always good to have an advocate on set for you. Yes. Very much sure. so. And that inspires gotta, us to be advocates for each other too. Right. So when someone's doing that for you, you want to do that for somebody else. It's, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's so many things. There's a lot of things we haven't even touched on yet. You've got a couple more minutes, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I was going to say also we're going to give us something to talk about when we're in Texas. Yeah, when exactly. I'm there. Oh, well, that's true. But we got we got to tell people about Army of Darkness because I know ah. all of our fans, they love you in that role. Oh, my and God. I, and a lot of people don't even know that that was you. <laughs> hmm. So <laughs> she said, I've got Army of Darkness poster behind me right there. <laughs> there, oh. there it is. Uh, I, I've, know, I've known Bruce for a really long time because he, he dated a sorority sister of mine. And, and oh. then he actually married her. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. And he married her. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, uh, so, and then Bill Mosley plays my captain, who is my brother in Night Living Dead. And then he was my ex husband in Dead Air. I said, but God, what, we have, what haven't we played yet? <laughs> what other weird relationship can we get into? Yeah. Um, yeah, that was it. That was interesting because I had my friends, Greg Nicotero and Howard Berger. Um, I, I was starving. I was, try, I was not making any money. And I was calling up everybody. I said, do you have a job? Do you have a job? Do you have a job? And I called up them. And I said, do you have a job? And Nicotero kind of goes, actually i do he said actually i we need a body to put into a cast and build all of these this army on you know so i could pay you a day rate and if you and i'm like then yes yes <laughs> thank you so i i went in and they 
put me in a unitard and I, I you know, they made a cast of my body and then they made a, um, uh, they made a dummy of my body and they built a lot of the army on that. They put, made bones. And then um, uh, he also alluded to, Greg also alluded to, we might have something else for you, but I gotta, I gotta check it out first. So uh, then he comes back to me and he says, call Rob Tappert. Um, you can audition for the witch. And I thought, okay. So I get the sides and the sides are like, you shall die. You shall never get the Necronomicon. <laughs> you know, I'll see you rot in hell. <laughs> yeah. I just was lead in a movie. I think I can do this. Do I really <laughs> have to audition for it? Cause I done the living dead, right? So I was hard. So I go in and I ride around on the floor and I'm just like, you know, eating, chewing the furniture for this witch. And I go away, driving away in my Volkswagen bug, just like, oh my God, I can't believe I just did that. That was <laughs> like, I'm in tears. It's like, oh my God, I've humiliated myself, you know, but I got the part. So what that meant was I'm back at KMB effects and now they're <laughs> casting my head and shoulders and they sculpt this incredible witch. Um, uh, and then, and the, so we're waiting for production to get to the point where I'm actually going to go on set and shoot. So uh, Nicotero says, I got another idea. The stunt coordinator needs stunt people in the army. I'm going to tell him that you're the only one who can wear that costume. And so he kind of forced me on the stunt coordinator, Chris Dole, Chris Doyle, who actually turned out to be a friend of mine, but it, whenever uh, uh, guys, especially in, in um, and, and no, I'm not trying to insult men. I'm just saying it was a very man's world in the 90s, right? <laughs> sure, and yeah. they didn't yeah. even consider bringing on a stunt woman. They were all stunt guys gonna do all the stunts, right? So uh, where they get forced, they, they're forcing little old me on them. Um, and he was, he was a bit condescending, but, I think I did a really good job for them. So we, we, I was in the army in those army scenes and there's stories around that too. But then um, we, there, Greg calls me up again and he said, we're doing this really low budget film, but I can put you in it if you will wear the makeup, the witch makeup. We haven't, hadn't shot, I don't think we'd shot um, uh, Army of Darkness yet. No, we are, and so he said it'd be great because we can test out the makeup and stuff. And really what they were making me into is this very ancient old lady. And the movie was first called The Nutty Nut. I'm not sure what it's called now. <laughs> but I play this old lady and they end up like throwing me downstairs or something. So while we're waiting for, we're on the set, they make me up as the old lady. I've got my hair, a white hair and a little old bun. I'm wearing a nightgown and I'm having to crash. <laughs> and they say, uh, Nicotero starts shooting his own movie. And he, 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 we have the dummy of the old lady that actually gets thrown down some stairs, but then he's like throwing it in front. He's having me walk across the street and then he has a car and he throws the dummy up on the car and then he rolls, he runs over the dummy and he has me laying there. <laughs> we shot our own movie while we were shooting a movie of just stupidness and having a great time. And then, then you know, eventually we got around to shooting actually Army of Darkness. <laughs> Oh, very well, you, long you had more involvement in that film than even I was aware. I knew you the you yeah. were the witch. Like, yeah, I didn't know you were the basis for the army. Yeah. And, wow. Yeah, that's, that's good stuff. Thank I didn't know that Nicotero. either. Thank you, Nicotero. I mean, my God, I really needed the money. And so he you know, was pulling it in a little by little, but in the end it helped a lot. And I really I was very grateful. Pat, wow. you have some great stories. It's so great to talk to you. I feel like we could talk thank to her you. all day, Lloyd. <laughs> There's so much else I think we could talk about. We could, we could. Yeah. Thanks for but, having me on, you guys. I was I saw that you were doing live stream. I'm like, I want to do a live stream. <laughs> yeah, everybody, that's what's so great. That's another great thing is Patricia <clears throat> emailed us. She saw everybody else doing live streams, and she said, I'd love to do it. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm you glad guys. She did. Fun. Yeah. Well, we would yeah. have eventually asked you, but yeah. yeah, it was just amazing. And thank you for reaching out and, and oh, asking. Oh, my goodness. Um, completely my pleasure. And thanks. To all the fans, I really appreciate why you, you guys are all chat, chatting away. And somebody put the link to, to my webpage on there, would you? <laughs> That'd be really nice. Speaking of we, we will. <laughs> Absolutely. Why don't we yeah. why don't we close with that? Give us all the yeah. links and everything. It's just 
questretreats.com or you can go to b5events.com same thing goes same place and right now i'm signing everyone up for b5 events if if okay. you put your name in that though you'll get an email from me and you'll be able to uh i have a couple of uh, different uh, newsletters i put out so you can choose which newsletter and, and if or not you know it's up to you or you can when you get there there's um a menu across the top it says pleasure thresholds book or something like that memoir um you can click on that and get the scoop on the book and see if it's something that you might want to get. Well, bring, some really of the books to, bring some of the books to, to Texas Frightmer with you. I'm sure oh, we will. have a lot of people asking, and I think they would love to have them there. I think what I'll do, Lloyd, is just ship a box to you or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, everybody does that. So, yeah, ship them to me, and we'll bring them to the show with us. That would be really fun. And I, I will, if you've bought a book and it's not personalized, I personalize it for free. So just bring it over to my table when I'm there. Amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Easy peasy. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Charlie, do you Thank go by you. Charles or Charlie or? I go by whatever people want to call me. Chuck, Charlie, Charles, whatever they feel like. Whatever I'll answer happens. to it. All right. <laughs> yep. Right. Good. Well, thank you so much, Patricia. It's been an it's, absolute pleasure. It has. I'm so excited to see you in September. I know. It's going to be good. It's going to be great. I All love right. it. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank, thank you. you so Bye. much. Bye. Wow. She's a, so great to talk to. And she's been in so much. And again, with you, Army of Darkness, I was not aware of the levels she was involved in that film. It's I wasn't great even, to hear. I mean, I knew that she played the witch, but I had no idea that it went even further than that. Yeah, definitely. I know another movie she was in we didn't touch on was Roadhouse with Patrick Swayze. <laughs> I was thinking of that. I was like, I should ask her oh, about yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much stuff that we didn't touch on. So I guess let's go ahead and uh, we need to give away a uh, photo and then we I need to announce the next giveaway. Okay. Well, do you have a winner for the last photo? What was the last photo we gave away? It was the um, uh, Costas Mandalore, right? Yep. The last one that we gave away is this. Okay. Uh, we haven't given it away yet. That's what we're going to give away now. And the winner... <laughs> That is so awesome. We have sound effects now. The we winner have to for is, the winner for this one, Tommy West. Tommy T -O West. T O M M I West. W E S T. And, Congrats, um, Tommy. We are going to get that out to you. Just PM us on the Frightmare page. If I don't hear from you first, then I will reach out to you as well and we'll get that to you. Um, That's. Go ahead. No, I was just saying, uh, Travis Brown was talking about Roadhouse. So I was like, yep, Roadhouse. <laughs> One of the best movies of all time. What did she do in that? You said she was in that briefly. She was in that briefly. Um, there's a scene when Patrick Swayze goes into the Roadhouse bar. She's one of the, uh, she's one of the women by the bandstand. So. Gotcha. I'm going to have to rewatch that and see. All right, let's see. Um, this is what we're giving away next. <clears throat> Uh-oh. It's got big. Lloyd got real. This is a Tobin Bell signed 8x10. This is a really cool 8x10 signed in person at Texas Frightmare Weekend. If you don't have a Tobin Bell, this is definitely one that you want to add to your collection. So <clears throat> make sure to do me a favor or do us a favor and share this. Yep. I've got another announcement to make real quick. Um, the announcement is that today we qualified for affiliate level on Twitch. Dude. So I uh, don't know what that means, but I guess it's, it's going to be pretty <laughs> cool. <laughs> hey, I don't know what that means either, but we're affiliate level. We Bum, are da -da -da. affiliate level. Uh, we've got a bunch of... Um, People following us now and apparently, you know, digging what we're talking about. And I can't thank you guys enough for that. Thank you for following us and checking yeah, out thank everything you. that we've got thank going on. <gasps> Whoa. Oh, my yet. God. <laughs> oh, Diablo. El Diablo. Diablo. <laughs> I Get. can hear him, too. Get Diablo. All right, do you have the holy water over there, Charles? I do. <laughs> The power of Christ compels you. Oh, 
Ooh, it's not working, Charles. You're gonna have to try harder. Ah, you did it. Good oh, job. I made it. I've got a German Bible here. I've been reading. Uh, so I did say share if you can share our video everywhere that you can. Yep. Um, please like and subscribe and. As I've said before, go to all our platforms and hit all the buttons. Just hit them all, All the buttons. We don't Follow know what they do, us. but hit them. We hit them all. We don't support. know what they do. Yeah, we need your support. We appreciate your support. Uh, we can't do it without you. Charles, before we go, uh, we, we want to talk about our Amazon watch party. Um, oh, Amazon watch party. So everybody knows today is exactly the 40th anniversary of Friday the 13th. It came out. 40 years ago today, May 9th, 1980. So, tonight, Lloyd and I will be live on Twitch, live streaming Friday the 13th, and we want everybody to join us, because I have a feeling it's going to be interesting. But, you do have to have Twitch, you do have to have Prime Video, and it has to be on your desktop. We did some trial and error, doesn't work on anything else, so. Yeah, desktop only. So I kind of put that on Facebook, um, uh, all the rules, if you need to go and find that post, but you got to go to Twitch. So you got to have a Twitch account, Twitch. You have to have Amazon. You have to have an Amazon prime account and prime. you have to do it on a desktop like the rib desktop. Prime that's a computer desktop. that sits on the top of your desk. Exactly. Desktop. A piece of steak on it. <laughs> piece of steak on it with a prime, <laughs> a prime rib desktop. But we're going to have fun um, with that tonight at 7 p.m. That's Friday Central. the 13th live, 7 p.m. Central. That's correct. Yeah. And other than that, I mean, it was a great interview with Patricia. I know, you know, she's such an amazing woman. All the stuff she does with the charity works. Everybody check out what she's talking about. Um, visit all of her sites. And I'm sure we'll link a lot of them on our videos as well. But um, with you guys, very excited to meet her in September. It's the first time she's done Frightmare, so we're all excited to see her. She's a guest that's been um, requested quite a bit over the years, and um, we've tried to make a Night of the Living Dead reunion happen a couple of times, but for some reason the stars just never aligned. And doesn't mesh. Yeah, we've got just about everybody now. We've got Tom and Bill Mosley and uh, Patricia, Tony, and Tony, and. Um, Boy, I have to. I, I have a problem remembering everything. But we've got William Butler mm -hmm. and McKee Anderson. That's everybody, I think. McKee, yep. So uh, we can't. A, of course, we can't have Tom Towles. God bless him. He's left us as well. But he was at Frightmare one year, and hopefully, you guys got something signed by him when he was at Frightmare for Night of Living Dead. You could bring and add to. Uh, Yvette Sherman says, "What the heck is Twitch?" Well, Twitch it's, is um, kind of like you're watching on Facebook. It's kind of like the same thing, but it's mainly it's mainly geared for gamers. Yeah. So um, tell them I'm going to type it up, and you can tell them. Yeah. More. Well, Twitch Twitch was sort of aimed towards gamers. Um, really, to start, Twitch was kind of used for people to live stream gaming, but it's also a platform that we can um, go live on. So. Of course, some people are Twitch fans, so they can see us there. A uh, cool thing Twitch has right now is they have the ability to have these Amazon Prime watch parties. So that's the reason why we're using the Twitch. Um, we can essentially show the movie while we're talking, you know, in the background with it. And you can still see us in the corner. So it allows us to sort of communicate and watch it together. One big happy family like we are. And we can do it legally. I mean, we could legally. Stream, yeah, we could stream <laughs> Friday the Thirteenth if we wanted to. But I mean, we don't want the repercussions. Legal, yeah, we don't want any <laughs> legal issues. So um, that's why that's why we're doing it on Twitch because at yep. first they had like seventy titles that you could stream, and, including uh, Gator, including. Well, I don't know if that was included <laughs> before, but I know Friday the Thirteenth was pretty much the only horror title that was available on Twitch or Prime. Twitch, mm -hmm. but just a couple of days, they opened it up uh, because of, they said, because of what's going on with the coronavirus and everybody is, you know, being shut down and or shut in their homes. So basically what they said was they're going to open up the entire library starting a couple of days ago. So, which is cool. We can keep doing this. I mean, yeah. there's a ton of great horror movies on Amazon Prime. So I think we keep doing it as long as long as people enjoy it, I guess. 
Yeah, I mean, if you guys, uh, we'll go ahead and do the one tonight so everybody join us. And if it's kind of a popular thing, we'll try to do it more often. You know, we'll get together and throw some of these movies up. There's some fun stuff out there we can watch together. I promise it won't be Gator with Burt Reynolds, like I just said. Or uh, that's the one me and Lloyd. We won't that's the one me and Lloyd, um, me and Lloyd tested last night. If some people popped in, we just randomly went on Twitch and we were watching Gator to make sure it worked. And it's not a very oh, that, good movie. <laughs> uh, don't don't let Charles fool you. It's one of his favorites. I love Burt Reynolds, so I have a Burt Reynolds problem. <laughs> um, I want to thank Mindy Carangola uh, for showing up. I don't think she's a you know a regular follower of her of ours, but I think she is a uh, fan of um, um, Patricia's. So I think that's why she joined us. So thank you. I want to thank her for joining us. And I want to thank uh, everybody for joining us. Uh, Death Dream says it would be wild to find out she worked on a Phantasm movie. That would be wild. Um, Lots of stunts in that those movies. Lots of stunts in those movies. I just want to say, uh, kind of echo what you said to to Mindy for joining us. She had some really great questions, so we appreciate your being interactive with us. Yeah, and Savini live commenting gave me life. Happy Mother's Day to me and the. <laughs> that yeah, was a surprise to me, and Lloyd too. Me and Lloyd didn't know Tom was going to be on here, so that was I didn't either, interesting. It was, it was great to see him. He's a good dude, and I was super. Oh, Tom's glad fantastic. To see him on. <clears throat> At one point, Pat said, "Send him a link and get him on," and he was um, very nice and said, "No, this is Pat's gig. I'm not going to jump in on that." So, oh, yeah, great! I thought Tom. that was pretty cool. We love Tom though. Tom's always sweet, and it's good to hear him jump on. Any any other questions? Oh, somebody said Supervan. I wonder if they have. I think they do have Supervan on Prime. I think actually Richard. they do have Supervan, and I am down for doing a Supervan watch party with Lloyd. <laughs> I just I just want to do Supervan so I can listen to uh, you dub over the characters. Oh man, do it on mute, and I will do every single character on Supervan. Mute it, and I will do everything. We got to do Superman. I I pulled that poster up, and it has the weirdest tagline. It says, "Watch your donkey, Smokey's going to get you." I was like, "Okay." Oh, Mindy, Mindy says she's actually been twice to Frightmare. Oh well, thank you, Mindy. I didn't know. Oh, that. thanks, Mindy. Yeah, well, I great maybe... seeing you uh, being interactive with Pat. We love the questions. Yeah, they were great. All right, guys. Well, if there's nothing else, I think we'll go ahead and sign off and uh, yep. we'll start to get ready for the 7 p.m. Central live Friday the 13th prime Twitch slash whatever. All of all that of we're that doing. fancy Twitch stuff. We're going to do all that. So thank you all for joining us uh, for Frightmare HQ. I am your host. My name is Lloyd Cryer. And who am I with there, Charlie? You are with Carlos Dos. Carlos Dioso. Dioso. I am Carlos Dioso. Thank you for joining. All right, everybody. Thank you all for joining us today. S- Seven o'clock, guys. We'll be here with popcorn and booze. I'm ready to party. There we go. Adios. Adios. <laughs>